bound for the promise. Are you bound this morning? I am. Oh. Sing, oh, welcome and go with me. I am bound for the promise. No chilling wind this morning. No poisonous breath. No chilling wind. No poisonous breath can reach that helpful shore. Sickness and sorrow, pain and death are fed and felt no more. Sing, I am bound. Sing, I am bound. For the promise, oh, I am bouncing, I am, hallelujah, this one, oh, will come and go with me, I am, let's sing the last verse this morning, oh, sing, when shall I reach that happy place? And be forever blessed When shall I see my father's face And in his bosom rest I am bouncing, I am bound for the promise I am bound, Lord Will come and go with me. I am bound for the promised land. Give a Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God in the highest this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You love him this morning. Amen. He's truly wonderful. Amen. Amen. His presence is truly wonderful this morning. Amen. Let's just lift our hands and sing a song. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. In this place And I know That it's the Spirit of the Lord And there's a sweet expression on each face and I know that it's the spirit of the and singing sweet holy Why don't you stay right here with us, filling us with your love? Oh, and for each blessing, we lift our hearts and pray. Without a doubt, we know our souls have been revived when we shall leave this place. Sounds good this morning. Go oh, singing, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heaven. Oh, no. 
continue, Lord, filling us with your love. Oh, and then for each blessing we lift our hearts with praise. Without a doubt, we know our souls have been revived when we shall lead. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy, oh Jesus, oh Heavenly Father, oh come now, Lord Father. Out, we know our souls have been oh, when we shall leave this Lord Father, we give honor to your name this morning, Lord. Oh, we give glory to your name this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we do nothing to deserve, Lord. Lord, we do nothing to deserve, Lord Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, but you paid a price for us, Lord. Lord, you had mercy for us, Lord. You loved us this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just give a Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just sing that song, How Great Is Our God? How Great Is Our God? Amen. Just lift our hands and sing that song. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great, oh, singing, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. He's the name of our all name. Oh, and he's the name of our all name. Worthy, worthy. Great is 
Hallelujah. One more time. I know, I know, I know. Testify. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, give the Lord some praises, people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. I know my redeemer land testify in me cry I know my redeemer land thank you Lord Jesus Let's bow our heads for with a prayer. Lord, it was under such trying times that Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. His body being destroyed, his sickened body, sores all over his body. It looked like he was going to die. Something broke upon him. Something inspired him inspiration came upon him he was a channel through which inspiration could flow right through and lord he watched his skin he watched his condition and he could give a faithful witness i know my redeemer lives oh god you live this morning because you live we live also oh we thank you for life we thank you for strength we thank you for health we thank you for your grace lord May you come among us in a special way. Heal the sick in our midst. Raise up the downtrodden in our midst. Touch the weary. Oh God, deliver the people. Set every captive free. Break the bands of wickedness and evil off the people's lives. And may taste freedom and liberty of your spirit. The freedom and the liberty of the sons of God. Granted, Lord, free your people tonight. Lord, those that hear, those that on the internet and the hookup, and those that would hear this message, bless we pray in Jesus name we ask it. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. You know he lives. My Redeemer lives. Your Redeemer lives. He's alive this morning. That's why we are here. We don't have a, 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 a tomb that we could point to. We have an empty spot where our Lord is risen from the dead. Jesus is, is raised from the dead. Glory. And that's why we have the gospel this morning. Amen. And the gospel is not bad news. The gospel is good news. Amen. That's what the gospel is. Good news. Amen. That he who made the promise has confirmed the promise. Amen. He who promised you life, he come to bring you life. Amen. Promise you healing, come to bring you your healing. Amen. Promise you deliverance, he come to bring you deliverance. Amen. That's what the gospel is. Good news. Amen. The gospel is not bad news. The gospel is good news. Amen. So if we're preaching the gospel, we have good news for you this morning. Amen. That he's alive. Go tell my disciples I'm not dead. Go tell my disciples I'm alive forevermore. Praise God. You can't kill a dead man. You're dead already. And Jesus died. Rose from the dead. He's not going to die again. You're going to die out to yourself to bring him alive to the world, to your family, to your loved ones. You're going to die. But he is raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And he is here, that means you have joy could come to you. Power could come to you. Isn't that right? You love him this morning. 
this morning we want to welcome Russell and Donna Douglas. Uh, where they at? God bless you. Welcome to the Headstone Stand. God bless you and welcome. This is the parents of invited by Khad Khadija Douglas. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's the parents. So God bless you. Welcome to the Headstone Tabernacle. Be so glad to be here. We just want to announce that um, uh, I was supposed to announce it some time now, but uh, I said it uh, in the Tuesday service. But I'll be going to India. And that's over the weekend of 3, 4, and 5th of October. I'll be in India for some meetings there. And in addition, when I get back, I'll be going to Pennsylvania the 11th and 12th of October. So I want you all to please remember me in prayer, members in prayer who will be on the fields uh, giving witness of the seventh seal. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So today also we want to welcome our connected online community. We want to say God bless you, all those who are connected with us live this morning amen and i uh, trust then that it has been a blessing to be hearing what we are sharing the word of god amen, amen. praise god you love him this morning amen. praise god what a blessing to be here on tuesday night speaking about that ephesians land amen. the promise is to live in the land of the spirit amen. that's the promise you have to come out of the land you're in to enter that land amen. and we are not going to stumble into that another ephesians Yes, we're going to be guided by the spirit of truth Amen. into it because Jesus promised to release the spirit of truth that's going to lead us and guide us in all truth. Amen. Now, uh, Sunday last, I said something that Moses was bringing dust here to the Lord to the people. Dust here to the Lord, dust here to the Lord, dust here to the Lord. And afterwards, it was dust here to Moses. And God didn't like that. And until they found where the prophet said that uh, Moses failed before he, because he glorified himself. So men could fail, men could fall, men could fail. Man is not infallible, God is. He say, I am God, and beside me there is none else. Amen. When God looked to his left, looked to his right, there is none else. Because he is God and God alone. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> he doesn't need the help of man to make him God. He is God and God alone. He purpose and define what he purpose. And release his purpose and that comes to pass. And if he purpose that you'll be delivered this morning, nothing gonna stop that. Not even what happened last night. What even happened last week, last year, last 20 years, that does not stop or annul the purpose of God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I don't care if the doctors give up on you, that does not annul the purpose of God. I don't care if you don't feel you're gonna get well, that does not annul the purpose of God. Because he said, My word shall not return unto me void nothing stops the purpose and the defined will of god it will stand kingdoms rise kingdom fall but god's word will stand he said he raised up pharaoh to bring him down because god will withstand oh you may be seated praise god hallelujah why you think pharaoh was the mightiest land the mightiest country the most industrial most advanced God wanted to challenge the most advanced country in the land so God made sure he raised up Egypt big and powerful everybody is afraid of Egypt every country fears the Pharaoh of Egypt who is like the evening and the morning star who is like unto Pharaoh but loose the mud God the God of them mud dubbers loose the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob loose that God he's not a man that, that he can lie. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love him this morning. Hallelujah. He's about to perform signs. He's about to perform wonders. He's about to perform miracles that you have not yet seen. So you better start to get excited about what he's about to do. Whether you're ready or not, he's going to do it. Because the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. And once you speak it, it must come to pass. Oh, glory to God. You may be seated. You understand what about to take place? We are about to defy sickness. Defy kingdoms. Defy man's word. Defy the history of your past. All of that is about to be de defied. Just as the Hebrew boys defy the lions. They defy the fiery furnace. They defy the king's commandment. They defy whatever man has to offer. We represent not ourselves. We represent another kingdom. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
What, what, you may be seeing. What, 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 one thing I like with the Ten Commandments is that the king's people were bringing in the stuff and so on to Pharaoh and wrestling it down. I'm from this king, I'm from Greece, I'm from this and whatnot. And here come Moses. And they asked him, what kingdom do you represent? He said, the kingdom of the Most High God. And instead of bringing pearls or cloth or whatever it is, Moses said, I bring the word. I come with the word. Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, give the Lord a shout, people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Now, those were just a few words. Let my people go. Just four words. People said, that's words, man. What do you have? A stick. A stick. What do you have? Long beard. What do you have? I have Aaron as a prophet to me. And that is what you come with? Yes. Now, Pharaoh, what do you have? I have thousands and thousands of horses. I have thousands and thousands of soldiers. I have thousands and thousands of men. I have thousands and thousands of, of palaces and people and everything else. And I have the slaves in my hand. What do you have again, Moses? I have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come again. I have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Where are your people? That's why I come to tell you. I come for them. I come to let them go. What do you have again? A word. Just let my people go. Hallelujah. We're going to start the battle tomorrow. Hold on. Get the Lord some praises, people. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, God is about to do things that are going to blow people's mind out. This is the battle that God was waiting for. Oh, glory to God, the battle of angels has become the battle of men. We're taking the war to the devil. We're taking to the war wherever we're going to take the war. Do you know that Joel prophesied a mighty army? Do you know there's a mighty army to rise up? That will rise up in God's name? In God's power? With God's presence? He said, my people shall never be ashamed. Some of you are ashamed to testify. Some of you are ashamed to live for him. Some of you say, I'm ashamed of this and ashamed. But he said, my people, when I'm finished with them, when I pour out my spirit, it shall come to pass. I'll pour out my spirit and my people. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You struggle. You may be seated. You struggle to live. You struggle to pay the bills. You struggle with life. You struggle with different issues within your own life. With mind battles. You struggle. You have to struggle. That's why he put us on the earth. And if you understand that, that's what I told you. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. You have to struggle. You have to feel uncomfortable. You have to feel like you don't belong. When God called Abraham out, he called him out among the people that he did not know. He called him to a country he has never been. He said, come on, come on, come on, keep on walking, keep on walking. You're meeting new people, a new way of behavior, a new way of life, a new way of worship, a new kind of aggression, a new determination, a new sense of purpose. Oh, hallelujah, your life shook from being comfortable where you are because God loves to do that take you out of your comfort zone make it stressful, make it tough make it pressing, make it frustrating to see who is who because that's the only way that's why that's why teachers give tests that's why school give exams to filter who is who who playing the fool, who skylarking who playing games and so on. Then the test come. Everybody got nervous. They have to get the pencil ready. It's a tension. Isn't that right? It's within one hour. It have a time period for the test. Is that forever, ever, ever? No, it have a time period. So what you're going through have a time period. Don't let the devil tie you up like if you condemned to be how you are because you're always what? Don't let the devil tie you up. There's a time for everything. A time to born, a time to die, time to shout, a time to break out, a time to go free, a time to be loose 
wounds from your infirmities. A time for you to be healed. A time for you to be sealed. Oh, give the Lord some praises. There's a time on the heavens for everything under the sun. A time for your husband to be delivered. A time for your wife to be delivered. A time. A time for your children to be delivered. They are going to be delivered. How long the devil going to hold them? Oh, hallelujah. Time. Hallelujah. Time. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So this promised land is to live in the land of the Holy Spirit. And this promised land is, what is, is the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'll pour out my spirit. That's the promise. Isn't that right? And then Joshua told them, uh, clean up your lives. Don't come to your wives. Sanctify yourself, every one of you. Let no man come at his wife. For within three days, you'll see the glory of God. It's a process of getting ready. A lot of people... You see, it's a process. God, God, Moses presumed because his mother told him stuff that he was a special child, that he was deliverer. Intellectually, he knew that, but he didn't have the empowerment to do that. And you have to be empowered to fulfill God's purpose. That's why it's called virtue, power for service. Not your service. God's service. Power to be in service for the Lord. That's when God put you in his service. That's when he signed you up and he rank you. And he put the little tag on you. I don't know what that you know, put the tag on you and so on. That you have rank now. Because you're now empowered. Then you could stop power to stop the demons that get out. So, so. Take left, take left. Go right. You, this one go right. This, this, you take left. That's power. That's what Jesus had. Isn't that right? Power to cast out devils. Isn't that power to prophesy? Power to overcome. Power to pray. Some of you can't pray and you can't pray and you can't pray. You can talk long on the cell phone, but you can't pray. And you can't pray and you can't pray and can't pray. You can't talk to God. But when power comes, you have power to pray. You have the power, power to forgive. And yet it's a big one. There's a big one coming now. Power to say, I'm sorry. That's a big one. That's a big one. Lots of people don't like that. A lot of, a lot of people don't like to say sorry because sorry means. Like you're wrong, and you don't want to be wrong, so you want to be right. So, sorry means that you're a little less than, or you're low down, or you make a mistake, make a out. You don't want to say sorry, but sorry means you're little, you're small. Yeah. If you want to say how powerful you are, take a bucket of water and take your big fist and punch in that bucket of water and see the hole you remain when you pull it out. If you have a hole, when you punch that bucket of water and come out, you're really powerful. You didn't get that one. Take a bucket of water in it. And take your fist and punch a hole. And just see if you see a hole there. And if a hole is there, you are really powerful. If the hole is not there, you have to come and rethink the kind of power that you have. So you have to be conscious of your littleness. Conscious how small we are. Conscious of the grace of God. Conscious if it wasn't for the grace of God, we couldn't be here this morning. Conscious of the blood of Jesus that died to redeem us and to reconcile us back to God because, because we lost the connection and, and God restored back the wireless connection and you don't have no roaming charges to pay <clears throat> when you pray, it's all wireless you, you, don't, you don't have any connection to plug in and so on you don't even have to pay for the connection you just, you just call on Jesus and, and the antenna is active Hallelujah, it's not shut down because when Adam fell, he sent angels to guard the tree. But now he sent angels to try to drive you back to the tree. So God's line, his wireless line is always alive and active. Nothing is not breaking the channel. It's when you're ready to call, he's ready to answer. Oh, glory, glory, glory. That's why you ought to be ready to pray. Hallelujah, and while, while you're waiting for the door to open, you could still praise him in the corridor. Come on, I'll give the Lord some praises, even if the door is not open yet. And you're in the corridor waiting to enter in. And the door is not open yet. Let him hear you. Let him hear your worship. Let him hear your thanksgiving. Let's all stand and give God praises this morning. Let's sing I love him, I love him. Because he first loved me as we approach the word this morning. I love him. You must love him. Love the Lord. Not just come to church, but love Him. He's a person. He loves you this morning. I love Him. Everybody, I love Him.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On Calvary Street. Amen. Could you turn the Bibles with me to St. John chapter 1 and St. John chapter 14? Two portion of scriptures this morning. St. John 1, we want to read from 29 to 33. And St. John 14 from 12 to 21. The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me cometh a man, which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. I'll read in St. John 14, reading from verse 12. <clears throat> verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son if he shall ask anything in my name I will do it if you love me keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but ye shall see me. But because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, I will manifest myself to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your holy word. And Lord, we are right under a promise of another comforter even the spirit of truth they were already comforted by christ among them the living word but he promised another comforter which was the spirit to be indwelling in them oh god release that comforter here this morning and fill every hungry heart in jesus name i ask it amen and amen you may be seated oh blessed be the name of the lord thank you lord oh blessed be the name of the lord it's so good to have a praise in your heart you always have something to thank God. And I think I saw a notice. Somebody said, um, once you're above ground, you have, you have something to praise God. Yeah. You're above the ground. Yeah. You're alive. Yeah. You still have health and strength. You're, you're above ground. You have something to praise God about. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this morning I have a title. You must be the word manifested to be the bride. Amen. That's my title this morning. You must be the word manifested to be the bride. And have an inspiration until you are convinced you cannot be concerned. Until you are convinced you cannot be concerned. Now, praise God. So God will never be able to, watch. We will never be able to have a church until God gets a foundation to lean on. He will never build his church on a bunch of nonsense. He has to come on his word or he won't, won't come at all. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. I'm only building. The hour is close at hand. When you're going to see something happen. 
when something is going to take place. And all this background here has only been laying a foundation for a short, quick message that will shake the whole nation. Amen. So for God to build, for God to add, for God to work, there has to be a foundation for him to work with. Isn't that right? And if God is to work with you, there has to be a place prepared. And that's why John the Baptist was sent. He was sent to prepare a place for Messiah. Amen. So God always has preparation made. Amen. He doesn't just come. He come on what has been prepared. Isn't that right? Amen. Now when St. John 6, 63, it says it's the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus is saying words are also spirit. Yes. Amen. Words are also life. Amen. It's not just words. Amen. Now watch. 1 John 5, 6 says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit that bear witness, because the spirit is truth. Amen. Not information, spirit is truth. Amen. That's why in court you said speak the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and, and so help me God and so on. Because it's have whole truth, and you could speak something that goes beyond what is true. Things that you want to color it and flavor it with. So they ask you to speak the whole truth, Amen. and not take but the truth. Amen. Isn't that right? Yes. So when Jesus say, I am the way and the truth, he's not just talking from a letter standpoint. He's talking about the spirit itself. Yes. So it's not just words, it's spirit life yes. makes it truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. Now a lot of people know the words. A lot of people know what is right and what is wrong. But they're not empowered to live what is right. Amen. So when he said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. He's not talking about something intellectual. He's not talking about some understanding. He's talking about that spirit. To come inside of you. To release you from your past. To release you from your sin. To release you from your guilt. And set you free. And who the son of man set free. Is free indeed. Oh hallelujah. 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 So truth come to release you. Amen. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Now look it for. And when much people were gathered together, they would come to him out of every city. He spake a parable. A saw went out to sow. He sowed. Some fell by the wayside. It was trodden down. Fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock. Soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns. The thorns sprang up and choked it. Others fell on good ground. Sprang up bear fruit a hundredfold. Right. When he had said these things, he cried, he that had ears so here, let him hear. Right. And the disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Amen. And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries Amen. of the kingdom of God. But unto others in parables. Yeah. That seeing, they might not see. And hearing, they might not understand. So a parable is really hidden mysteries. Right. Veiled as stories. Yeah. Yeah. But in them have hidden truths. To be revealed to his elected, which is the children of the kingdom. Isn't that right? So then Jesus began to interpret that he's unto you, is given to know the mysteries. He said, No, the parable is this the seed is the word of God. Now watch, he said, My words are spirit, my words are life. But now he said, My word is a seed. So God takes spirit, make it word, take word. Make a seed. Yes, and that seed is what comes into you. Could we give the Lord a praise? Those by the wayside, they that hear, then come at the devil, take it out the word out of their hearts. At least they should believe and be saved. They on the rock a day when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root, which for a while believe in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns a day, which when they heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on good ground are they which, here we go, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Fruit with patience. Oh, hallelujah. The husband man waited for the rain, waited with patience for the fruit of the earth to come forth. Oh, hallelujah. This is not instant thing because character is not a gift. 
character is a victory and character means that you went through something so god is interested in you going through something and not asking him to take you out of something but asking you to help you give the grace to go through the stuff that you need to go through in order to have character because character is not a blessing from the lord character is a victory oh could i hear some praises in the house So God's son, this unspoken original seed, was his example seed. And that's why when we want to look at the template, we look to Jesus. When we look to see how God handled his sons and treated his sons, we look to Jesus. Because he was the example seed son. And when Jesus received the spirit, we know when Jesus went. Jesus didn't went and put the advertisement on papers and said, here am I, I am the Messiah. Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness for his place of trying to be tested by the word Amen. dry word Amen. and jesus overcame by it is written Amen. not i'm feeling this he had no feeling to feel it was dry it was desert all he had was rock word it is written it is written it is written you feel something it have no feeling in this it is written it is written it is written and when the devil start to quote he said it is also written Amen. glory to god are you with me now so this was the example seed son behavior and operation so watch what his life was when the spirit poured upon him after his baptism and the holy ghost came upon him the very life that he produced that same here we go that same watering spirit of the holy ghost will bring forth the same kind of life doing the same thing that he did so now we find out the spirit is also watering spirit Amen. so the holy ghost is the watering spirit Amen. and if you have the watering spirit that spirit coming for seed that means that god just said water to water no you have to have seed for that watering spirit to come upon and if that watering spirit come upon that seed something has to take place because water and seed does connect a certain way something has happened when water strikes seed oh give the lord some praises people so you have a seed it's dry it looks like it's dead it has no power in it it looks like it's just a seed laying there that could be an oak tree that could be a coconut tree whatever it is it's looking dry you could walk past it you could store it in the cupboard you could lay it there for years but if you only let water touch it if you only let water come on it if you only let that watering spirit strike that seed something going to happen because Jesus in my words are spirit oh and they are life it's the spirit that quickened oh so you have to sit here and get in the spirit when you understand that nothing gonna stop you from worshiping when you understand that nothing gonna stop you from praising your God because it's the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing Do you understand? So there's a bit of teaching this morning. The word is a seed. Ah. Huh. Jeez. Now watch. Watch. So watch. The same watering spirit of the Holy Ghost will bring forth the same kind of life. Doing the same thing that he did. If it is if it's the same seed. Son of God's seed will bring forth a son of God's seed. In other words, every seed after its kind, according to Genesis 1.11. So son of God's seed will produce son of God's seed. Isn't that right? Now Jesus already prophesied and we read it in John 14, 12. The same works I do. I'm not hearing you. Shall you do also? So what is Jesus saying? The same seed that I have going to be inside of you. And a water and spirit going to come upon you. And the same life that I have going to be living in you. And the same works that I did, you're going to do too. Oh, could we thank the Lord for that? Could we praise God for that? Do you understand how the same works he did you're going to do? It's 
not you trying something. It's not you experimenting with something. It's another comforter. Ah. Oh, hallelujah. That's going to abide with you forever. Okay. Now watch. See what it is at? Why I believe the word is a seed? And if the rain falls upon the seed, it will bring forth after its kind. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will water and bring forth that seed. It's the water to the seed. And if the seed has been planted and the water falls on you, oh, hallelujah. In other words, the Spirit going to fall on planted word. The Spirit not falling on this Bible. This Bible has to get in you. Come on now, come on now, come on now. So God has to wrap the Bible up in a capstone revelation. You will be seated. There are only three Bibles. The Zodiac, the Pyramid, and this Bible. Well, this physical Bible is that Bible. So when this Bible becomes that Bible, and that Bible comes inside of you, then that becomes the full seed inside of you. Then the seven ton of revelation is the capstone revelation of the entire Bible. And it must show Jesus Christ. Any revelation that doesn't reveal Jesus Christ is the wrong revelation. Oh, glory to God. This is Jesus Christ. That's the life that Jesus had. Oh, worship him this morning. Give the Lord some praises this morning. That's the life that Jesus had. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's, that's the thunder. Oh, that's the thunder. That's going to shake the devil. That, that, that's a live voice. That's going to come alive. I live in faith. I live in virtue. I live in knowledge. I live in temperance. I live in patience. That's the voice that's going to come alive. That's the voice of God. That's what Pharaoh heard. Let my people go. It was more than words. It was the voice of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once more, the world will hear direct from God. What will it be? It will be the voice of God in the last days. And the spirit and the prophet and the bride will say the same thing. And the spirit and the prophet and the bride will say the same thing. There shall be a final voice to the final age. Seven thundering voices. Seven living voices. Oh, have seven voices to shake the devil's kingdom. You may be seated. God, devil saw in the beginning. That's what Genesis is. The beginning. In the beginning, devil slipped down to mess up God Eden. To mess up God's beautiful children. Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. First Adam, spirit man. No flesh man. No man to till the soil. There was no man to till the soil. There was no dust man. And the Bible said, God formed man in his own image. And the Bible said, God is a spirit. Therefore, God formed a spirit man. Man floating like the spirit. No physical man to till the soil. But then God took some dust. And the Bible said, God formed man out of the dust of the earth. He took some calcium. He took some potash and he formed a man standing there and he put the spirit man into that dust man and man become a living soul. That's why when people die, you get dust to dust and ashes to ashes because you come from the dust. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. All right, give the Lord some praises, people. You may be seated. That is why when God wanted to redeem man, he had us to get a process. There was a hidden mystery of why the world was flooded in the days of Noah. What people don't understand, it wasn't just a flood. It was a water baptism to baptize the earth that was about to be redeemed. Because God redeems the earth the same way he redeems the individual. So in Noah's day, it was baptized with water. In Jesus' day, his blood sanctified the earth and fire coming. 
all whole week, whole week. On the front page of Yahoo, they're talking about World War Three. How Putin threatened, he said within two days, he could invade more of the cities in Europe. In two days. Putin is big and Putin is bad. And he is the big peer. A Gog and Magog. He is fine in his position. What he's supposed to do. And if Putin could make them challenges and make a big roar, like the bear is waking up. And everybody trying for more nuclear and more weapons and more submarines and more bombs. Where do they escape? This is not slingshot. This is not little bow and arrow. Them days done. Man have the weapon to destroy humanity. There is no way out. There's only one way is up. This is the way we have to get out. This is the only way you can't hide. You can't run. You can't say you in Trinidad and you wouldn't get affected. No, you don't do that. Don't say that. Friends, we are at the end. Amen. At the very end. It can't have more end than this. You see when that cannon, and there's a light somebody behind the head ball, poo! That was no end. Because that can't do much damage. That's cannon ball, you had to light it up and put them, poo, and hold your ears and whatnot. They don't have that no more. No, they have things that can destroy the earth. Yes, every man to die. Oh, hell, atomic weapon. And they only specializing and getting better and better and better. Only the church going chugalog. Chug church seems to be getting worse. A man getting better, man getting more excellent. Long time you have a tablet and the tablet you have know, it. Long time you have a speaker, you know, you have big things on your head. And so you're walking like that, hearing music. That was, that was his speaker. So when you want to hear head go, you're resting up your shoulder. That's how you're carrying speakers long time. On top of your shoulder. That was two little things in the ears. Man improving. Yes. And the church, chugalog. Chugalog. What, what was the life boy? Chugalog. I'll, I'll hear about that. We're talking about that. What about you thunder to shake the devil? Well, I know about that now. I want to discuss and argue the word. The church weapon right now is only argument. They reduce the arguing word. Right, that right word, you know. That's that not the word we talk about, the word of God, you know. That's just arguing, people arguing in each other's face. I believe this, I believe, I believe this, I believe this. And the devil just laughing, say, continue believing that. The devil encouraging them, yeah, yeah, you, you keep on believing that, here. Yeah? And you believe here. Yeah? And the devil hiring up pam 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 pamphlets of belief. He's sharing it out. He say, you hold that. Call your church this. You hold that, call your church that. Call your church that. And you stand by that. Stand for your conviction. Hold on to that. That word argument have nothing to do with the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but he is with you the word but shall be in you the spirit come on give the lord some praises people i am contending that christianity is a life you don't have to be rich to be a christian you don't have to be educated to be a Christian. Oh. oh, glory. Hallelujah. May God move upon your heart. Because you see, you have to be convinced. This is the word. That this is thus here the Lord. And, and, and if you get convinced, you'll be concerned about your family, about your friends, about your neighbor, about your husband, about your wife, about your children, about other people. You'll be concerned because let me set you up. You ain't going without them. Wait, 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 wait. You may be seated. God have sons and daughters. Like our parents have children. They have sons and daughters. And when they say, family, let, let's stand. And you're missing one. What do you do? Where, where, where are you going? He playing behind. Come from there. Well, right. You see God? God come down. They say, come from there. Wait, wait, wait. Come from there. Come out of your Baptist. Come out of your Catholic. Come out of your... Come from there. You are not a Catholic. You are a son. You are not a Baptist. You are a daughter. You are not a Pentecostal. You are a Christian. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
God want a family photo? You want a family photo shoot? Everybody who is belong to him have to be there. Not one will be lost. Jesus said, all that the Father hath given me shall come. You may be seated. Not in a family. All the sons are the same height. Size. Look. Unless it's a bunch of twins. Identical that is. But I don't know if God have identical twins in the kingdom. I never saw it. I don't know. Maybe. But my point is this. Each person is individual. But Abraham said when you get to heaven. You will see weak people. You, 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 you'll be shocked to see who going to be across there. People who you think wasn't going to make it. People who was in trouble. You see, you see, it's not about the people. It's about who their father is. Come on now. Come on now. I want to hear a bigger shout than that. It's not about you. It's about him. He is worthy to be praised. To be worshipped. To get honor and get glory. It have a big bomb coming, you know. Revelation 22, 17 is a big bomb, you know. You know what Revelation 22, 17 says? The spirit and the bride say come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not come because you have a long dress. Not come because you're not wearing pants. Not come because you don't wear miniskirt. No, no, no. Come. Just come. Just come. Come. Your smoking's come. You're drinking, come. Your back sitting, still come. Your mini said, come. You're wearing pants, come. Spirit in the bride said, come. You have to respond. It's a call that has to go out. It's a scriptural call. I don't care what condition they are in. God is not watching their condition. Did God watch your condition? Oh, give the Lord some praises. Then stop trying to judge people by the condition that they are in present tense. My God, you're making me feel to preach. And I come to teach this morning. Well, you may be seated. I like that, brother Papa. City, amen. We say, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that. Did God look at your condition and say, oh God? And God looked at you and said, oh. I go on. If God, if God was thinking like us, and he looked, he bought like God, I done, yes? Look, look what he tell Moses. He said, Moses, how long are you going to stand them people? No, it's God people. Eh? Moses, bring them out here. Yeah. And the people carrying on. Go tell Moses, Moses. He said, he said I'll kill them. And raise up a whole new bunch greater than them. Yes. Then Moses had a bargain with God. He said, but God, if you kill them as one man, all the nations will say that you bring them out, but you couldn't bring them in. That's why you kill them. How we go look? God, pardon them. Read the Bible. Moses was bargaining with God on behalf of the people. God said, okay, I'll forgive them because of your word. But as I live, they shall not see that land. understand God is real do you understand we are not talking about the Pope we are not talking about the Bishop we are not talking about the evangelist we are not talking about a pastor we are talking about God himself it's amazing how this omnipotent or powerful God subject himself to his own laws it's amazing that he doesn't break the laws that are set in motion hallelujah he has to come by the word he has to lose a prophecy a virgin shall conceive for he himself to come by prophecy hallelujah even jesus i was going to david's prophecy and the david said i shall not suffer my holy one see corruption and jesus had to connect with that prophecy to say destroy this body in three days i will raise it up jesus connect with david in order to say a testimony of where he is at 
That's how interconnected the word is. This word is God. Every page is God. God is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And the word is a seed. And the prophet bring the word to get that word inside of you. He sent this word and healed them. Power of the word. Some people have a discernment of it. Some people recognize it. And they could respond to it. Like that centurion came up to Jesus and he said, Master, I have a servant, he is sick. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Now that's a big shot you're talking about. I mean, not worthy. Man had the best porch in the country. I mean, everything looking nice. But he is saying, you see, he's belittling himself. He's getting the right viewpoint. You see, when you recognize how small you are, not, you, and this, get this big shot spirit and this arrogant attitude and this proud and you, you and like, like God owe you something. And, and, and no, no, you have to get out of that atmosphere altogether and, and get a humble heart, get an honest heart, get a simple heart. Lord, I, I, you see, because see, the guide have to come to lead you. And if you can't take instructions by the word now, when the guide comes and says, I'm taking you up the, up the den, it's lions there, you say, lions where? I'm going back there. See, so when you see you come to this place where you could be led by the tutor, led by the guide, and he says, there's lions up there. They say, Lord, as long as my hands is yours, I have no problem with the lions. Just keep on leading. See, you, you want to take instructions. If the pastor gives you instructions, that's the pastor, that's not the guide, that's the pastor, and you don't want to listen, follow through, and obey. I mean, when the guide comes, you will say, no. You see what I'm saying now? You've got to be able to obey in the little things. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Read the Bible. Somebody asked Brother Mama a question. How can I get deeper in the love of God? He said, read the Bible and pray every day. Read the Bible and pray. Amen. Read the word and pray. It's very simple. You didn't say put a thing on your ears. No, read the Bible and pray. That is all. Get a prayerful spirit. Commit your life into the Lord. You start the day right. You put God in front. And you're looking to trust him. Amen. Yeah, you're looking to trust him. And, and he becomes your trust. And you recognize afterwards, you start to let, see God in your operation, active in your life. You see, when God is out, is you running your show? You on your own. You going here, you're doing this and you're doing that. And it's you and you and all about you. But when but when you surrender, and this is what God wants, then you begin to see God. You have a miserable class. You could pray, God, cool those children down. So you're a teacher, and you don't say, Well, you know, God have nothing to do with you teaching. No, God in the teaching too. Because you have an opportunity to put seeds in those children that will set them on the right path of life. So all of that is that. You're concerned. Sometimes they come from stressful families, stressful home. Nobody care for them. Nobody love them. And the day somebody take time off to show some love and some care and concern, you're surprised to know that response. And that's the whole thing. Some people come and they beat the people up, beat the people into each other because that's the easy thing to do. Everybody know they're born in sin, shape, iniquity. They have issues in their own life. And the pastor comes with them big sick and said, put licks, you know, put licks. And everybody say, yes, 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 yes. And especially those who can't control themselves. They like people to control them. There are people like that. That is why dictators are necessary. In some cases. Not me. I'm not applying for that post. I have no desire to be there. That's why they have dictators. Because people don't want internal self-discipline. So they need a strong man. And when the strong man comes, the strong man says, left turn. They say, yes, sir. Right turn. Yes, sir. And they feel they're in obedience to the strong man. But God likes to say, well, thou be made whole. Amen. Peter, love us down me. Amen. Oh, you know, I love you. Feed my lambs, feed my... Love us down me. Peter said they get a little pressure. Because Jesus pushes them on. You really love me? <laughs> and that kind of pushing, pushing, pushing. Lord, oh, no, it's all things. You know what I mean? Give me a break out of that now. Pressing some nubsy that disturbing me. And I don't want to be disturbed in my spirit like that. But Jesus was pushing an emphasis to show him he has to go deeper than where he's at. Come on now, come on now, come on now. And, 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 and as we go forward, you have to go deeper than where you're at. And that's where I had to challenge you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. My, my, my. Okay, let's go. Now watch. So the watch, okay. Let me go further now. The ark, no ark was made of go, go for wood and shit him wood. It's hollow. Everything is taken out of it. But anybody seeing the material that Noah used, what well, they're going to laugh at him because that material was going to take in water and sink. Yes. Now, God is not a fool. God is the fountain of wisdom. Yes. So, God let Noah take a soft wood that is very absorbent. Yes. 
because God is bringing a further revelation to pitch it on the inside and outside. Because God wants the pitch to soak in, to make the boat waterproof, sealed from sinking. You understand what I'm saying? So God holds the revelation of what's looking for us in your life. Because, because he wants you absorbent to the spirit. So he making sure there are some holes around you. I'm not hearing anything. Man. I'm not hearing. That's why when you're strong, you get God trouble. So God has to mash you up and let you fall. And let you break up a little bit. So God, that's what you want to hear. Oh God. He wasn't, he wasn't saying that all the time. You was only going in the power of yourself. But when God break you, oh God, help me. You will say yes. You're now getting in tune. You're now getting in the condition. So when people are broken, I am broken. Don't think God crying because they broke me. You know? God said, you're now getting ready. You're now getting ready. You weeping, you crying, you're broken. God said, you're now getting in shape. Because I can't work with that stubborn attitude you have. I can't work with that self-will that you have. I can't work with the, what you're pushing and peddling. No, no, no. When you get broken and God has to break people's spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know God so from Jericho. They have their walls. They feel insecure. Like when you have your walls. They feel very secure. They used to run chariot race on the wall of Jericho. They had houses, shops in the walls of Jericho. Nobody challenging Jericho. Jericho on their own. When you see the walls alone, you just walk, just past Jericho. Hey, we're not fighting there. You know what God did? God let reputation go ahead of them fellas. So they only hear and report, oh God. You hear what happened? They take out the king of eye. They take out this king, that king, that king. People inside Jericho shaking, you know. All them walls they have, they're shaking, you know. Because these men moving fearless. They know God is with them. When, when they start to know God is with you, that, that, is, that is different. Not, not the courts with you, you know. Not the books with you, you know. Not you have tapes, you know. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this living God. When they start to hear what the children of Israel do to this king and that king and this nation and that nation and the conquering sickness and the conquering diseases and the conquering and the blind seeing and the deaf hearing and the dumb speaking when they know the God of Israel doth live. Jericho, Jericho only holding up because of the walls. So Joshua says, loose spies inside of there to see what's going on inside of there. Joshua loose two men inside of there to go and spy out the land. You see, before you take the land, you have to spy it out. You can't go blind or go in, go in, you'll get boss head. You'll get conquered. You can't just go in the land like that. There's an approach to take what you have to take. Come on now, help me preach somebody. Come on now. Come on now. You're not just going to take it. You want to know the key. Hallelujah. You want to know how to take it. You want to know battle strategy. God is a strategist, you know. God is a strategist, you know. One time, one time you want to take a city. You know what he did? He let the fellas run in front, so on, and then come back out. And when they come back out, they say they, they, they do like they're running away. And that time Israel had men on the, wrong, on the other side like that there. And when the city come out, they see fire burning. God is a strategist. He just tell them how to take it. How to possess it. So before you take Jericho, God had to soften them up by testimonies. By hearing what God is doing. That's what this message need. They need some testimonies. Not paper testimonies, you know. Real ones. Real healings, real deliverances, real baptisms, real miracles, real signs, real wonders, real pillar of fire coming down, real angels standing on the platform, real discernment, real calling out sin, real calling out spirits, real setting the captive free, real breaking the bands of wickedness. How many wants that? If you are not convinced of this, you wouldn't be concerned about it. That's why Jesus said, if any man want it, come unto me and drink. Jesus didn't say that. He said, if any man thirst, that's different. Wanting to drink and thirsty is different. When you're real thirsty, you'll drink from the drain. Because you're so desperate. When you're thirsty, you are 
desperate you have water for a long time you say i need a drink i've got to have it that's when you're thirsty how many thirsting and jesus said oh i love that jesus said jesus said blessed are they that hunger hunger and thirst after righteousness they shall be fed filled come on now give the lord some praises people in other words if you are thirsting for righteousness you are blessed shout for being blessed this morning if you are hungering for god you are already blessed shout oh for the thirsting in your soul god gonna fill you yes god gonna seal you god gonna fill you hallelujah i didn't make the promise I'm not saying that, that but Ovid said that. Jesus said that. He said, I'm going to give you another comforter. And on another scripture, he said, if I don't go, the comforter will not come. I've got to go for the comforter to come. You have to got to cross over Jordan. you got to cross from the word into the spirit. We need people that are convinced of these promises. Convinced that God gonna keep His word. Convinced. What will what will make an old man like Abraham testify? He gonna have a son, and you know his wife is as barren as barren could be. What well, he was convinced. It was real to him. It was a revelation to him. Even his wife laughed. But God didn't talk to his wife. God talked to him. So because his wife was laughing, he had to have faith for himself and her also. If he not allow her to throw his faith off. Then all fall down. If if Abraham was an emotional man, and a man put a put like a fleshly kind of man, and when his wife say, "Boy, you know, you believe that? You see how old I am? You will get to happen that." But but the thing about it is that Sarah ended up tying up Abraham to go with Hagar because she believed that the interpretation had to come that way. But God says, true Sarah, thy wife. It have no other interpretation than that. That is how I am saying it. I am saying no other woman is true Sarah. That is my mind concerning this issue. And if God said true you, come on now. Come on now. That clap song so half-hearted and weak. You laughing just like Sarah. Don't let that ten spy tie you up, you know. Ten spy bring out your report, you know. Five senses in the flesh and five senses in the spirit. See, taste, smell, touch, feel, imagination, conscious imagination. You listen to them spies. Then spies will tell you, you can't make it. You see what happened last night? You get vexed with your wife. This happened. You quarrel. You force. You complain. All that is part of the spy technique. All, we don't talking about the outside spies, you know. We're talking about the inside spies. Things that talk into your mind. Telling you you're not going to make it. You struggle here, struggle here, not gonna work out. And you start to believe those things are not gonna work out. I'm just bringing a type. But when you shake them senses off, imagination, you have nothing to do with this. Conscience, don't even raise his head. Memory, don't even bring back anything at the past. And feelings, you better take a seat this morning. Because I believe the word. So you put all them senses in their place. And tell imagination, don't even think about it. I am not imagining nothing about it. God said so. I'm going to be filled. I'm going to be sealed. Glory to God. Let them, let us take the heads off those dogs off. Hallelujah. Then you are free. You're not, moved, you're not motivated by your feelings and your emotions and your conscience and your memory and your affection and your reasoning. You're motivated by the promise of God. Because John was so convinced of the expectation and fulfillment of the promise. John said there was one standing among you. I don't know who he is. But he's going to baptize you with fire. What would make John say that? He was convinced. He was so convinced that he began to speak it present tense. He said, 
I don't know him but the one who told me to baptize with water told me the one that you see the spirit coming on and remaining on him that is the one that's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost John let me see you. John living by faith preaching by faith he don't know if Jesus is tall, dark, fair skin, fat, thin. He don't know what Jesus looked like. He don't know what the promise looked like. All he know, the one who told him to be baptized, told him that the one you see, the spirit. So John only looking for spirit. He is baptizing, but he's looking for spirit. He is hearing word, only looking for spirit. He is baptizing and preaching, but he's looking for the spirit. He's looking for somebody that the spirit will come upon. He's looking for some son that God could say, I am pleased. Some man, somewhere, some son, somewhere, somebody on the earth, God gonna be pleased with to send on that dove. But I ask me, God gonna do it. God promise it. Somebody somewhere on the earth God have to come down hallelujah and say this is my son. If you're not convinced you just come to church. If you're not convinced you go home and you just act the same way. But when you're convinced you make preparation come on come on now you 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 have some family overseas and they haven't been in Trinidad for a long time and they call you a three four days and said I'm coming on Wednesday I'm coming to visit you and and you say you're sure you say you're playing games I'm not sure you're gonna come say yeah I'm coming and because they're coming you start to make preparation because they're coming my god you start to clean the place you start to prepare the place you start to check out where you're gonna take them where you're gonna carry them because they're coming to have a time and you are gonna be there oh yeah man you're gonna be welcome and they're gonna be your guests Look, you might be seated. John was so disconnected to the numbers of people coming to get baptized. That would have impressed a human spirit, human spirit pastor. The among the people that get baptized, oh, what a blessing. There's plenty of likes, but there's plenty of votes. There's plenty of people. There's plenty of membership and so on. John said, you better be for fruit, fruit, meat to repentance. The access laid to every tree. John only roughing it up. Somebody said, John, cool it now. Yes, you coming out. That is Pharisee's daughter, you know. You can't preach so this morning. You know, you know who that man coming and get baptized? He's the right reverend, something neighbor, uncle, or whatever it is, you know. And this one is a high one. That one a high. L -l Listen, the Pharisees saw John's behavior. They knew something was amiss. So they say, they say, they say, they say, uh, 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 who are you? Uh, uh, are you the Messiah? Or, or should we look for another? John said, no, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Go read your Bible. I'm Isaiah 43. So John was putting himself in the scriptures. Just if you read that, that's me. Uh, could you... Could you read a book and say that's you? Come on now, come on now, help me something. That is place in Christ. John could say, go and read about me in Isaiah 40. Well, I want you to find where you are written. Come on now, brother George. You should be screaming on that one. After a while, you gonna find where you are written. Because you are the words of the book. Come on now, I'm in the word this morning. Oh, glory to God, you can't. So when John took the book, you were the words in the book. And his words is spirit and life, isn't that right? So you are just bypass your theophany. Come down on the earth to be tested and tempted. But now, St. John 14, 20, at that day, you're going to know I'm in the Father. You and me and I and you. You're going to get a revelation of who you are, where you come from, where you're going. And you will know as you are known. Oh, my. God bless you. So real seed of God is absorbent to the spirit. Isn't that right? When God, here we go, and his word becomes one, that is when God's spirit waters the seed of God. 
it produces God it's not the individual it is God you are dead you are not yourself no more you reckon yourself dead hollowed out waiting for sea germ then what is it it isn't you no more it isn't the man it's God in the man it's the sea germ like the beginning spoken word God's spoken word made manifest in the man then it isn't the man it's the man that died oh hallelujah and then Christ come alive Christ means the anointed one a man that was anointed oh hallelujah and God dwelling in him what was it the germ with the flesh the anointed one the flesh being anointed with the spirit of God produced the word of God made manifest the flesh so Jesus was the flesh of God the word he was the word but he needed the spirit to come upon him to make it manifest so the fullness of the spirit came down upon that son you are not going to get the fullness you are going to get your measure oh give the Lord some praises people hallelujah Jesus received the fullness but you received the measure just like the ocean just like the water and the ocean you take a little spoonful of water and you have all the ocean there the contents of it if you take chemicals of the ocean water you have in a spoon the same content of that spoon of water is what is in the ocean you are not the ocean the what the content is what you have so when you have a little bit of God in you all that was in God all the content of God all the mechanics and the chemicals of God is inside of you a little ounce of God is God hey! you didn't hear what I'm saying you have the chemistry of God inside of you a little ounce of God is God inside of you hallelujah you have the fullness but you have a measure a measure of power a measure of overcoming a measure of witness hallelujah a measure of strength oh glory hallelujah so listen to this so watch do then watch now Christ mean that right uh, the, the anointed one flesh be anointed by the spirit of God produce the word of God he here we go he was God's word made manifest and now he died here we go in order to pay the debt of your high breeding that you could die to yourself until you are no more yourself but be filled with his word believe in his word then the Holy Spirit that was in him comes down to water that word to make it grow so you see all this money gospel all this blessing gospel it can't work because all the blessing doesn't give character it has to come to a place that's why i ain't get to it i'll just say it the dynamics have to drive the people to calvary people need to die who do you hear saying i hate myself with all these selfie cameras they have taking a picture of themselves they love themselves and then technology comes to make it even help themselves some more then they have selfies people love themselves but job say i hate myself i repent in dust and ashes it's a stripping of self that man must come to which is the cross because only there you really meet jesus it's only there you get the breakthrough into the holy ghost you are restored to Eden by the altar and through the altar. Amen. So watch that he might reconcile us back to the sons and daughters of God. That through the church, through the church, might flow the same life by the word. Continuing, listen, the word made being manifested as it was in Christ. Christ was God's word made manifest say that after me christ was god's word made manifest say it again christ was god's word made manifest so therefore the bride gonna be the word made manifest because she is part of christ not just the word not just the word so this this is to shake the babies of their pampers and make them throw away the pacifiers. Amen. That you can't just sit here and believe in the word. The word has to become manifested in your life. Amen. Could we give the Lord some praises? Amen. You 
must be convinced of that. Amen. That you want your wife to see it. Amen. The word hanging out of you. Amen. She must jump and say, whoa, that, 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 that is not you. I married you long enough. I know your behavior. I know your walk. I know your talk. So you see what I see in there? I go in and pray. That is the effect of that. That, that is the effect. When, when the husband started to get in the groove of the word, wife, they, she have to pray. Because she started to see God then. She started to see God oozing out. And she, you don't want to cross that. You know what I mean? You, you, you want to walk right. What about the wife now? Husband offbeat. And she started to manifest Christ. It's time for him to pray. Because he knows he can't cross that. That's God. You see, we had to see. That's why I say, sirs, we will see Jesus. That, that, that's what he's about. So we will see Jesus. We, wanna, we see Jesus. We see man long enough. 40 years, we see the parade of the beef, I call it. The parade of flesh and blood. We, we, there's no need for beef parade. There's no, but there's no need for flesh parade. We need to see Jesus. Amen. And to see Jesus, somebody have to die. Amen. Somebody have to die. Anytime you see in Christ, somebody die. You know. Christ is not a favor. Christ is not a flavor. Like somebody paints something on itself. I have a button, Christ. <laughs> That's the button. We don't talk about no button, Christ. We're not talking about no testimony, Christ. People putting in a post box. No, we, we're talking about a life. That begins to flow. Virtue begins to flow. A power begins to flow. As you're about to pray for the sick, a power comes there. When you come into a sick room, as you walk in, the devils in that sick room of sickness, the devils know, time to leave. Just get ready. Get, get ready. We, we, have, we have to go now. Other devils talking to other devils saying, let's go, let's go. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. We feel them coming nearer. Because virtue is emanating all around you. Virtue power. As you walk into the hospital room, as you walk into the sick room, a power is going inside of there with you. And them devils know to eject, exit, take the leave, and they leave before you even get there. And by the time you get there, it's time to pronounce the blessings of God. Don't you want to see that? I want to see that. Don't you want to see that? That's what God promised, a perfect church. Walking in order. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, let's continue here now. Now watch. Watch. And he died. He gave his life that he might send the spirit. Take his body up and send the spirit back to water. Pay the redeeming price. He that believes in me, then he comes the Holy Spirit to water the same word. Now watch. The word itself was lost through the ages. So when the spirit come, the spirit couldn't come to water the word because the word itself was lost. So God has us to come to gather up the scattered word and tie up the loose ends to restore the seed of God back again. So all that Luther left off. Because Luther believed he was justified but they were still drinking beer and smoking. They wasn't sanctified. They were saved because the word for that time was justification. Then Wesley come and said, you can't just be saved and smoking and drinking. Clean up. Get sanctified. And Wesley brought the sanctification message. And they went on further. Isn't that right? So in every age had loose ends. Had things that was not clean and clear. After they were sanctified like a washed glass, here come the Pentecostals. God poured the spirit. And then they feel, they speak in tongues and so on. That's as far as they go. So the baby stuff and they play with the gifts and so on. And here comes the prophet to bring the word now. Because the word comes to prophet. The word don't come to a pope. The word doesn't come to a church. The word doesn't come to the nomination. The word of the Lord came unto Noah. The word of the Lord came unto Moses. The word of the Lord came unto Isaiah. Well, the word of the Lord came unto William Marion Branham. A 20th century prophet. According to Malachi 4, behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Isn't that right? So the word came to a prophet. So the prophet brought the word. The full word. Hallelujah. So that word could become a seed again. So the first part of our ministry was tying up loose ends. Are you with me? The first part of his ministry was tying up six seals of loose ends. Just going back and dealing with Genesis, serpent seed, and all different stuff. He had to clean that up. And then he had a message for the bride. Which are seven tenders that will gather the bride. Which show the bride how to repair. Would give the bride faith. Would utter to the bride. Would give the bride revival. In other words, he had a special message for the bride. Amen. Not, not wasn't his message because the Lord Himself descended with a shout. Yeah. So the Lord Himself, which was the husband, the revealed word, came for his wife. God has sent somebody. He sent Malachi for to call out a bride, but he descended with the message Himself. Yeah. Do you recognize when you get a, when you get a wedding invitation? Is a message? 
is a, is a piece of cardboard or, or paper or whatever it is, inviting, inviting you to a wedding. It's written. Well, that's what Brother Ram was. He came as a messenger to bring the invitation to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah for the bride to get a call to respond. Isn't that right? So the seven thunder is an invitation of life. For your life to be changed. God is not forcing anything about on you. You could stay a church member if you want. You could stay ordinary if you want. Or you could be like Samson when the spirit came upon him. You hear what I said? You could stay ordinary or you could be like Samson. Samson was not ordinary. He had seven locks. He had seven thunders. He had seven virtues. He had seven mysteries. He had seven voices. You may be seated. Those seven locks was the key to his power and strength. That was sealed as a mystery to Samson alone. Samson alone held the secret of the power that he had. Now, Samson wasn't a big, small, muscular man like what you see on paper, them big, hunk, hunk muscles. That would be this around the God. It comes like the man strong, that's why he's moving this and moving this. Samson was an ordinary guy. But when the spirit come upon him, he did some extraordinary things. And one time, they caught Samson inside and they closed the gate. You know how the gates are those times? Big gates. Samson take off the gate with the post and carry it on a hill. Samson didn't even bother to even check to see the days, how heavy the gate is. He just take the gate out with the post and continue walking and take the gate. And they can't lock Samson in. Samson beating lion. Samson, a thousand men getting beat down with Samson was just different. Why? The spirit came upon him. Hallelujah. And activated the power inside of him. Spirit. He was a channel to which God could flow through. When God sees Samson, God said, there is my spirit flowing freely. Oh, I could use him. I could work him. The devil sat down in his boardroom and said, this cannot continue. We can't allow this man to embarrass us. Get a plan. Call his agent. Get his spies. Interview Delilah in the spirit realm and, tell, and decide to set a honey trap, they call it, for Samson. Honey trap. Did I not looking good? Walking good? Talking good? And Samson get activated with liking Delilah. That was the beginning of his fall. But God had another plan. Besides the devil have a plan, God was planning on top of his plan. Because God had a plan to put Samson in the right position to get more results that he could ever get before. So while the devil is working, God say, moving so, I will move so. Let's move. Let the battle roll. You may be seated. Here Delilah says, Samson, where's your secret? Samson started to play games with Delilah. If I tie a cord, I'm going to lose my strength. Tie the cord, he break it. He laughing. It's a joke for him. Because even though he's lying, the power is still there with him. Because God has said, if you lie, there will be no power. God said, don't cut the hair, and the power will be with you. Don't break the secret. Keep it silent. Don't let the devil know nothing about it. Samson started to do other little games and so on and you know, on. Delilah wearing him down. And that the devil does, you know, weary you down. Until Samson decided to give away the secret. He break that seal of silence over his life. Of the secret of his power. Give it to Delilah. And Delilah now fully anointed. Get the men to cut off his locks. And Samson wake up. As if he's going to wake up with power. And only recognize the power was not there. He was ordinary. And I hope you understand this. You Christians sitting here. Without God's grace and presence and power you are ordinary so really come with a grateful heart have a graceful heart a grateful heart a thankful heart you may not be where you want to be now but be grateful don't act arrogant and rude as if God owe you something 
So then we know the story. They bind Samson, dig out his eyes. Samson is not blind. And God watching, Samson has some years to go through his stuff. Samson is grinding. But God have a plan. And afterwards, they want entertainment to bring out Samson. My. You see, where you are doesn't mean where you want to be. That, that, that way the devil don't understand. And you have to understand, your present condition doesn't mean that next two years or next six months, you will be still be in that condition. So even though Samson was born, let's say, for five years, blind, weak, that time, the secret, the luck's going back. I will restore, say the Lord. The devil could cut some, but not all. He can't go down in the roots because the roots gone too deep. You see, the devil only came in the beginning, but you were before the beginning. The devil could only stop. When he digging, he going to dig up to deep in the beginning. But once he breached in the beginning, he can't go beyond that. But when we could go before, there was a beginning. We, before the foundation of the world. We, could, we have all roots. Go deeper than deep in the beginning. So the devil can only cut off up there in the beginning. But Samson had deeper roots than that. So those roots brought back the here. It brought back the strength. It brought back the word. It brought back the seed. But there was no visible evidence of power. They thought was the same weak man that he was five years ago. They thought he was the same weak man that he was seven, eight, ten years ago. But this time, what was restored? The word was restored. He was waiting for the watering spirit of the Holy Ghost. But more than that, he was waiting to be positionally placed. Placed in Christ. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So here comes Samson. The entertaining people. They call him to entertain the crowd. 3,000 plus people and stuff. Isn't that right? And then they say, bring him. Hallelujah. Used to be servant of God. Used to kill lion. Used to be feared. Bring on one time former champion for God. <laughs> Ex-Holy Ghost man. Ex-powerful man. Ex-man on fire. Ex-man pressing and saying amen. Bring him out. Jars a biscuit. There's a door and look at him. Let's have a good laugh. Little did they see through his suckerless eyes. The tears. They didn't see the tears. Samson wasn't weeping for himself. He was convinced. The word was restored. He was convinced of God's power. He was convinced God is his father. And he was concerned that he could bring back glory to God once more. Once more. Once more. He had failed, but he wanted to bring glory back to God. He fell, but he wanted to bring glory back to God. It wasn't about Samson. It was about God. It wasn't about Samson. It was about God's power, God's presence, God's omnipotence. You may be seated. Stripped. Powerful man. Led by a little boy. He's blind. Tell the little boy, lead me to the pillars that holding up the building. Lead me there. Positionally place me there. I'm going to pray in a while. I'm going to pray in a while. It's something when a son who have blood over him, it's something when a son who feel the access right to God. Oh, when you're logging, you can't be denied. When you put your name, you can't be denied. When you put your name to log in God's program and to go log into God's website, you can't tell your child next name. No, 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 no. You would not be denied. And Samson asked a little boy to put him positionally between the posts. And you could see Samson and they're laughing. And while they're laughing, Samson is crying. He's not weeping for himself. He is saying, Lord, remember me. They had no right to take out my eyes. Avenge me once more. Show your power. Show your glory. Samson was waiting for the watering spirit. Samson was waiting for dynamics for his mechanics. Samson was waiting for his word to become spirit. And when the fire fell, Samson threw down the whole thing. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, 
Oh, give the Lord some worship. Give the Lord some glory. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. You must be seated. Hallelujah. 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 You must be convinced that this is the word of God. This is the spirit speaking to you. Hallelujah. Ordinary men. You may be seated. Doing extraordinary things. Ordinary people. It wasn't people because they have a degree. It wasn't because they have an engineering degree or some lawyer degree or doctor degree. Ordinary men that God pick up and use. Look at David. Ordinary guy. Seen about the sheep. And God, because of Saul, who was anointed to be king. And because Saul, out of the spirit, despising the will of God, out of tune with the program of God, God tells Samuel, I have an anointed one of the son of Jesse to be king over Israel. Nobody could stop that. Nobody could change that. When God speaks, it got to materialize. Oh, glory to God. Sit down a minute, please. Listen, here it is, a king in power. A king on his throne, a king in his palace, a king that God allowed to be there, and the same God that put that king there say, I have find a better man. God does raise up kings, and God does pull down kings, God does raise up people, and God does shift people. The angel of God is on the earth. Fixing things are wrong. Moving things are wrong. For the kingdom of God. For the coming of the Lord. Friends. You may be seated. You can't serve God from a historical perspective. You can't say you were blessed five years ago and you are forever blessed because God blessed you five years ago. You got to serve God daily. You got to serve him still. You can't go back because when the same people that God brought out, God killed. Because of their unbelief. Samuel was told to go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. Samuel is trembling. He says, Saul, here that Saul will kill me. Because yes, yes. in them days, you don't talk against the king, they will kill you. Yes. You don't do on cross, don't go those guys, they will kill you. Amen. Yes, that's right, they didn't play any games in those days. God told Samuel, just have a feast. Invite Jesse and his sons. Tell them to come into sacrifice, come into worship. God gave him a cover to use in order to bring the sons there. God knew David wasn't going to be there. He knows all things. Here come Jesse, Samuel with the horn of oil. And he saw the first son come by. Eliab by name, I believe it was. And Sam, Samuel says, surely this is he. And God whispered in his ears, God don't see the way man sees. Man see the suit. Man see the tie. Man see how long men preaching. Man see so much reputation and the view of others, but God sees the heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Samuel have the horn of oil to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be king because in those days you have to be anointed to be king you can't take a crown and put it on your head and say I am king that is dictatorship that is when you take crown in God's program you have to be anointed to be king you can't just say I am the leader says who you appoint yourself leader well go ahead feel free God have to anoint to be king so Samuel is there waiting. What is he waiting for? Spirit. Witness. The spirit is what witnesses. The spirit, not the five senses, the spirit. So you can't look at height. You can't look at teachings and preachings and gifts and talent. He's looking for heart. So this man passed. That man passed. All of them passed. Samuel said, but I ain't get no witness. Do you have any more sons? Because God can't lie. 
If God tell me, come and anoint one of the sons of Jesse, they have to be one of the sons. They say, oh, yeah, we are the one more. David. He, he out there with the sheep. He says, send for David. I'm not going to sit down until David come. Amen. Now, you know who those days, it's not right day to have sheep. You have to wait. Amen. You have to wait until. Hallelujah. Until David come. Yes, so Samuel saying, no, he's sitting down. Right. So Samuel on attention right now. When David come, he said, this is he. Now watch what Samuel did. He poured the horn of oil in the presence of David's brethren. Now that is, that is something else they can do. I mean the whole horn. You know. Everybody's seeing David and anointed. You know. When God wants to do it for you, <laughs> God don't have to ask permission from anybody how to bless you when to bless you hallelujah hallelujah i feel somebody gonna get blessed this morning yeah i feel somebody gonna be blessed this morning oh receive it receive your oil listen david is not no anointed king but could he rule no he had a character he's too young he ain't ready for no throne He's anointed. If David around say, let, let's say David run to Saul. Say, Saul, God anoint me king now, you know. He, they will lose his head. That would be a dead king, David. David can't run up and say, yo, ah, 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 speak in tongues and said, I am now king. So he opened a king service. He, his church name, the kingdom, king, king David, king David assembly. Are he preaching that Saul sent his men? Everybody in the assembly get cleaned out. You don't do that. So David just went and see about his sheep until the time. No, you see, you see, God have to work this thing out because when David get anointed, an evil spirit come upon Saul, and Saul said to behave so badly that they say, you know what? You need some music, boy. It's not iPod or iPhone here yet. It don't have them mp3 yet but david has played real good send for david so david god had david gifted with music gifted to play so they sent for david and david going in his palace not yet but it's his palace david playing is his throne he's a wrong soul so don't even know his replacement has come I, i'm not hearing you I, I, i'm not hearing you Saul sitting on the throne, but he doesn't even know his replacement has come. Oh, glory to God, amen. David, David playing. When David playing, Saul feeling soothed. So Saul want David to come more, and God want David to come more because God want David to walk in the palace. God want David to see the throne. God want David to see the steps. See where he has to be operating from. God want David to see where his kingdom is going to be established from. What a mighty God we serve. God will take it from the back and God will bring it to the front. God will take it from the being the tail and God will make you the head. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, we are serving God, people. Musicians, come up, please. I'm not finished with this message. Actually, I have 13 pages and I just reached page 3. But I think I'll wrap up with this. David. David is playing. That same David is who coming to bring food for his brethren. Sent by his father. Hallelujah. God setting him up. Yes. Because Goliath challenging them. Yes. For 40 days, day and night. Morning service, evening service, David. Goliath preaching his messages and Israel getting disturbed by it. Every time they hear the tape recording playing. And they have big loudspeaker, Goliath. David came in time and day to hear Goliath stepping forward. And he was stepping forward big time. Send me a man to fight me. David said, who's that? uncircumcised Philistines 
define the army of the living God. David said, look how big he is. Look how tall he is. I never see a man so big. Look at that. David wasn't expressing about that. You know. He was wanting to know, we are the army of the living God. Who dare defy us? Who dare challenge us? Who dare come against us? Who is that man? They were so desperate to get a fighter. Amen. Saul said, anybody fight that man, get him a daughter. But anybody fight that man, will get killed. So, who going to fight that man? If you want your life, you're not going to fight that man. Man to man, hand to hand, you're not going to fight that man. Right. Nobody was going to lie at size. Saul said, offer gold. and You know, you get any offers. Money, popularity, woman, you name it. Go, anybody. They may say, I am not going for that. But for God's honor and God's glory, I want to give a testimony. And this testimony, I didn't read it in a book. I didn't play it from a tape. I didn't hear it last night. I was really on the field. And a real lion come. Wasn't paper lion. This wasn't fiction. This was a real lion. One with beard and big teeth. One that is raw and get man frightened. Real one. And I killed him. Real beer. Not three little beers in baby beer book. Not that kind of beer. Real big beer. The one that is fighting men. I kill that too. That man going to be just like those two. This is what people need. They need a real experience with God. They need a real experience with the fire of Almighty God. Oh, glory to God. May God bless you this morning with the hungering, with the tasting, with the crying and a sign in your soul. Jason, come up and stand. Hallelujah. David was so convinced of the power of God that he ran to meet Goliath. He wasn't walking. He was running to victory. I give the Lord some praises. When you catch by revelation the power of God and the revelation of God that God has put upon your life, you're going to shout you're going to praise God. You're going to worship. Because worship confirms your revelation. When you could worship, it proves that the word has been opened to you. May the Lord bless you. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Blessed be his wonderful name. We appreciate our pastor this evening. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. What a mighty God we serve this evening. Oh, blessed be his name. Amen. As you turn and greet your name in Jesus' name. Oh, my Jesus, pour in the oil and the wine. And the wine that restored my soul. He saw me bleeding and dying on Jericho Road. He's pouring the oil and the wine. Oh, my Jesus, pouring the oil and the wine. The wine that restored my soul. He saw me bleeding and dying on Jericho Road. Oh, pouring the oil and the wine. Sounds good this evening. My Jesus, pouring the oil and the wine. We saw it, my soul. He saw me bleeding and dying on Jericho Road. Oh, he's pouring the oil and my Jesus, oh, sing Jesus, pour brandy oil and the wine. The oil that restored my soul. He saw me bleeding and 
lion on Jericho Road. Oh, it's pouring. You don't need to pour it on you this evening. Pour the oil and the wine. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, 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 my Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. On Jericho Road. Oh, it's Paul. Just one more time this evening. Oh, my Jesus pouring the oil and the wine. The oil that restored my soul. He saw me bleeding and dying on Jericho Road. Pouring the oil and the wine. Give a lot of shout of praise this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your wonderful name, Lord Father. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord. You love him this evening. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let's sing that song, Lord, send the rain and pour out your spirit. You feel that way this evening? Lord, send the rain and pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall, fill us one and all for pressure. Oh, Lord, send the rain. And pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall. Fill us one and all. For pressure. It sounds good this evening. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, send the rain. And pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall. Fill us one and all. For fresh on me, Lord, send the rain, Lord, send the rain, pour out, pour out your spirit. Let the worshipers arise this evening, let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing and surrender in my own. Oh, I surrender to the King. Let the worshippers arise. Oh, let the worshippers arise. Oh, my Lord. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my own. Surrender to the King, Lord, Lord, send the rain, and Lord, send the rain, oh my Lord, and pour out your Spirit, let the fire fall, fill us one and all, for fresh on, Lord, send your rain, and Lord, send it out, Jesus. Oh Lord, pour out your spirit, let the fire fall, fill us one and all, pour fresh, let the worshipers, oh, let the worshipers arise, let the sons and the daughters sing, I surrender in my own. Surrender to the one more time. Let the worshipers, all you worshipers, let the worshipers, let the sons and the daughters sing. Oh Lord, I surrender in my own. I surrender to the King. Let's worship His name this evening. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lord, send the rain. Lord, just pour out your spirit this evening. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give my shout of praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, somebody say praise God this evening. Yeah. My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hey, many, 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 many men. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, many, 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 many. That's in a song in your presence. That's why I'm strong. In your presence, that's why I belong this evening. You feel that way, man? That's where I am strong in your presence, oh Lord, my God, in your presence. That's where I belong, seeking your face, touching your in the cleft of the rock Ooh, in your presence oh God Ooh, in your... oh that's where I am in your presence In your presence, hallelujah. Oh, seeking your faith. Oh, hide me in your presence, Lord God. Presence, oh God. Now give the Lord worship this evening. Give the Lord glory. Give the Lord honor. Thank Him. Praise Him. He's worthy. We're in His presence this morning. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. You appreciate the Lord this morning. You appreciate the word this morning. You appreciate the pastor this morning. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Just a few announcements, a few prayer requests. Uh, certainly we want to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Diffantella, invited by Brother Stephen Oliveri. Welcome to the Headstone Tabernacle. Happy to have you with us this morning. And certainly... We have some uh, prayer requests. There have been a number of viruses and different illnesses moving around. And uh, on Friday, I was diagnosed with dengue. See, the devil is a liar. And those who heard about it said, Brother Isaac, what are you doing in church this morning? Well, I said, <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, There's no better place to be than in the house of God this morning. I say, if there's any place to get healed, it's in the house of God. And if there's any place to fall dead, it's in the house of God. Because one time Paul was preaching and somebody fell dead and they just prayed for him, raised him from the dead and kept on preaching. Hallelujah. So I'm laughing at the devil this morning. I know who my father is. The devil has a job to do, but we have a job to do this morning. And no demon, no sickness, no tiredness, no weariness can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So remember me in prayer. Brother Stephen Kangley also is, is at home sick. Sister Phoebe Granville at home sick as well. So we want to remember them in prayer. And 
uh, any other name that we haven't received but might be sick this morning anyone in the house of God this morning we will also remember you in prayer knowing that healing is a children's bread so can we bow our heads for a word of prayer our gracious heavenly father lord we are so unworthy to come to your throne this morning but through your shed blood at calvary lord lord that blood speaks for us this morning lord your word says that healing is a children's bread and we come this morning to eat from that bread this morning lord god there are so many needs in the church this morning we pray dear god that healing virtue lord will pour out this morning upon your people lord father we curse every sickness every disease every condition Lord whatever it might be father Lord we know that sickness has a time limit father and we declare time up Lord this morning against sickness and disease father Lord God the devil has no right to put his hands upon the sons and daughters of the living God father we claim lord every brother every sister back this morning we pray for brother stephen kangley that wherever he is right now the power of almighty god would cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet lord sister phoebe granville this morning may you touch her may you heal her may you take away the body pains lord anyone else we come this morning lord against the flu against the virus against chicken gunia dengue lord Ebola. Up, Lord, diabetes, arthritis, high blood pressure, female condition, Lord, whatever condition, Lord, might be in the body, we curse it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We say, Satan, let my people go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we pray a special blessing upon Lord your servant mother over this morning. Lord, he has labored for service after service after service after service after service. Lord, he has defied a tiredness in his body. He has defied his physical condition because he has such a burden for the people. Lord, may you strengthen him this morning. May you give him a fresh charge this morning. May you freshly anoint him this morning. May you raise him up this morning. May you give him virtue this morning. Lord God, may you supercharge him in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Lord, we thank you for him. We love him, Lord. Lord, may you bless every brother, every sister in the house of God this morning. Lord, and as we prepare to leave, but not from your presence, may you be with each one. May you grant traveling mercies. And may we, Lord, stay in the presence, stay in the spirit, stay in the atmosphere. Lord, be with us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church says, and the church says, amen. You may be seated this morning. You can keep playing softly. So we have a bit of announcements. <clears throat> Firstly, after service, we'll be continuing the exercise we started last week. For those of you who have not updated your contact information or your information with the church, um, there'll be a table downstairs. We, we're hoping to finish that exercise today. So if you haven't done so, we urge you to just check and confirm that all your information is correct. Um, this uh for quite some time over the course of this year the officers of the church have been trying to find the right time to um have an appreciation for our pastor and we tried to do it around the time of his birthday earlier this year but time didn't allow it with traveling and different commitments that the church had but this coming wednesday it's a holiday republic day here um, so at 5 p.m. we would be having an appreciation. How many appreciate our pastor this morning? Amen. So this coming Wednesday, the Republic Day holiday at 5 p.m., we'll be having an appreciation uh, event for him. And um, for further information and registration and stuff like that, please see Sister Kangley after service, but at 5 p.m., uh, this coming Wednesday and in light of that there will be no service this coming Thursday there will be no service this coming Thursday there will also be a very short choir practice after service today in preparation for that event on Wednesday um, so there will also be a youth service this coming Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, don't miss it a very important youth service at 5.30 p.m. this Saturday and of course service continues on Sunday 
So may the Lord richly bless you. Stay in the presence, stay in the spirit, and we're looking for God to do great things among us. May the Lord bless you this morning. Amen. As your just come forward. Live in me, Lord. Live in me. Take my life, Lord. Let it be a consecrated Lord to thee. Take my life, Lord. Live in me. Oh, live in me, Lord. Live in me. And take my life, Lord. And let it be a consecrated Lord to thee. Here's my life, Lord, live in me, and hallelujah, I am free, Christ have given liberty, a seven thunders is the key. Take my life, Lord, and live in me. Oh, live in me, Lord, live in me, Lord, live in me. And here's my heart, Lord, just let it be a consecrated Lord to thee. Here's my life, Lord, live in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am free. Christ have given me liberty. The seven thunders is the key. Here's my life, Lord, it's living, mm, oh, living me, Lord, living me. Here's my life, Lord, let it be so consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Here's my life, Lord, and live in me. God bless you.